Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So today we're going to be continuing on with the project that I did in my garage. I fixed all the sun damaged paint on my friend's little Mark V Golf here. So they're not a bad car these it's, and it's definitely worth keeping in good condition. The rest of the car's got low K's on it and it's in reasonable condition so definitely worth keeping the paintwork in good condition so one other thing that i'm actually going to do for him um, i'm going to wait for a few weeks to let it fully cure up and i'm going to sand all the dust out of the bonnet because we got a fair bit because hey you know we're painting at home you know we've got to be realistic about the kind of results you're getting um, but I'm going to get it back and give it a ceramic coating so that hopefully it's going to last a little bit longer and I'm going to get him a, um, a spray wax type thing as a bit of a booster for the ceramic coating. I'm going to say give him instructions to say you know spray this over it once a month and the paint should um, stay in good condition. Uh, but yeah, so I'm mixing up the clear coat. Autothane clear is the clear that I'm using. It's just the budget line of PPG. Um, so the base coat that I used was the PPG Deltron solvent base because I'm spraying at home um, and yeah just using the, the budget line clear look the way I said it, it's um yes it's cheap clear but I'm spraying at home like you've got to be realistic about the kind of results that you're going to get when you're spraying at home anyway you know you're not you're gonna, not going to expect the best of the best finishes so yeah I don't see the use in going and using top line clear I mean maybe one day but for now I'll just stick on with the cheap clear and um, yeah it's been going well so far so as I say four to one to one which is a little bit more reduced than what they recommend um, the gun that I'm using is the pro light with the t110 air cap and the 1.3 mil fluid tip so I went for the t110 because um, uh, this is actually the first decent sized job I sprayed here at home and you know I, I've got a new compressor but uh, sometimes they can make all of these claims on the label but you're not going to know how it's going to actually perform until you actually get it home and start spraying with it um, but as it turned out I was actually really impressed with the way that this compressor performed it did not drop one bit of pressure the entire time that I painted this so it was probably five minutes per coat, so five minutes of that trigger pulled at two bar pressure, which is like 29 PSI, um, and it did not drop one bit. So I was very impressed with the compressor, and I'm going to be doing a proper review on it in the future. But yeah, another thing I really liked about it is that it's silent, so you're not annoying all the neighbors. Even if you're doing work in the evening, it's not going to be annoying them. It's really not that loud at all. As you can see, once I start getting to this point here, the vision is starting to get a little bit poor. I do have a fan up there, but I'm going to have to do something about the filter. Woohoo! I can't see shit, but I like it. <laughs> if you missed that, I said, I can't see shit, but I like it. I was actually having fun, enjoying every single minute of this because. I guess I'm outside of my normal habitat. I don't get to spray at home very often. And I guess it's just good to do some work like this at home and see how the other, you know, half of the world do their paint work. And look, I mean, not much changes, to be honest. Like, uh, the entire procedure really stays the same. Um, except for when you're painting, you know, you're gonna have a bit more overspray. That's the basic, uh, you know the basic uh, difference between a spray booth and a garage but I am going to improve that filter setup that I've got so I ended up getting on eBay and I typed in charcoal filter and the filter that they ended up sending out the one that I ordered was actually from a range hood so I'm going to have to get a proper paint filter like the ones that we use um, on the floor in the booth but that filter doesn't actually filter out the gases so I'm going to use a normal paint filter on the inside of the garage but then I'm going to set up like a, an exit box so um, I do have like a, a ducting or venting that goes outside and then I'm going to feed that through a filter that will um, get rid of the odor so I'm not um, gassing out my neighbors so yeah, that'll be good. And again, I'll be doing some update videos on the garage and how it's going. But so far, it's doing pretty good. I did put sheeting. You might have noticed in the background, I've got some plastic sheeting across most of the walls. There is a couple of spots where there isn't any, but, you know, um, I think it's enough. 
Um, and yeah, specifically on the, the roof or the ceiling, um, I think that's probably the most important one because I guess what would happen is as the place fills up with overspray, that overspray goes and collects and hits all of the dust on the ceiling and then that actually weighs all of the dust down and then it will probably actually cause it to drop into your paint. But yeah, the settings on the spray gun remain relatively unchanged from what I spray in the booth. Um, I think I mentioned in the previous video that it wasn't that cold of a day. I think it was about 17 to 20 degrees Celsius when I sprayed this car, so it wasn't too cold. Um, I had just, yeah, full fluid, full fan, and 29 PSI, or two bar. So, yeah, sometimes I do actually like to wind the uh, fan in half a turn, and sometimes I do also come in a little bit on the fluid, but, yeah, for this job, I found that I didn't need to. Um, as you see, it's getting a nice wet coat down, and yeah, uh, the T110 was chosen because it consumes less air than the TE20. It also gets a little bit of a flatter finish, so yeah, I mean, that wasn't really why I did it, but it was, it was mainly about the air consumption. But yeah, by the time we do end up getting a bit of 2000 onto that bonnet, buzzing it down, we're going to get rid of all of those D-nibs, which did end up coming up and it's going to be dead flat like that bonnet is going to be like a sheet of glass by the time i'm done with it and as i say i'm going to put a coat of ceramic coating over it and I'm, i'll probably even do a video on the ceramic coating um but yeah i'm actually pretty impressed with how this job come up um if you guys have got any tips or pointers always do leave them in the comments like i might not always reply to everyone i'm a busy man and i do have a full-time job and a life outside of um work so i might not always have time to reply to everyone but i do at least always read them and yeah big thanks to all the people who have left me some pointers um in the previous months because i did a few videos uh showing people around and telling people that i was planning on doing some painting from home and there was definitely some good advice um, uh, from you guys to me so thanks for that and yeah like some of the little ones were even just like get some plastic sheeting up something that I don't think I gave much thought to I just thought oh, I'll just get in there and start painting but yes definitely having the tarpaulins or the plastic sheeting up on the walls and the ceiling uh, yeah definitely a must if you're painting from home yeah over the last few months i've been uh, building up lots of tools and equipment and gear and all like the sandpapers but i'm pretty much there now um, i've got loads of the polishing compounds i've got all that kind of stuff so i'm at the point where i might actually start taking on just some weekend work you know even if it's just like a little spot repair on someone's car um, the smart repair type things I'm, I'm not interested in taking on big jobs um, anything that I have to hit with a hammer I don't want to do it basically whoa baby have a look at that Woohoo! now that's what I call getting out there and painting some shit baby that's awesome But yeah, all things considered, I must say I'm pretty happy with how it came up. You know, I was realistic from the start. I wasn't expecting anything perfect. But, you know, one of the main things is that you don't get it covered with silicon. So like big fisheye type things, anything like that. That's like um, sand it back and re-clear it type territory, you know. I did get one. I did actually have to dab that in. But honestly... It's all going to polish out, you know, but as I say, like, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be like the kind of finishes that I was doing when I worked at that Porsche shop. No, um, but at the end of the day, like, I guess this does show that I'm capable of doing the high-end stuff, but also, you know, garage paintwork, and I enjoy it. But as I say, like, um, in the future, I'll probably leave it to jobs a little bit smaller than this. Um, I mean, yeah, like... I probably would do a job this size again, but it's probably around the limit of the, the kind of size of job that I would like to do in here. But I do think that improving that filtration system, possibly I could do bigger jobs even. But even if um, I was thinking that you could do something like break the job up even, say so if you wanted to do, you could probably do a full respray in this garage, but just paint the side at one point. Paint the other side, you know, a week later, 
paint the roof bonnet and boot lid um, another day so I was thinking that that was an option but as you see here just getting a little bit of clear coat dabbing that into the low spot of the fish eye then I'll get the tungsten sand it back polish it up and you'll probably barely even know that that little bit of silicon was there Radio guys, I thought I'd give you guys a close-up look at this job here once all that overspray has settled down. So first thing in the morning, I came out here and I've got to say, oh, I'm very impressed with it. It looks a million dollars, like really happy with how those headlights came up. As soon as this car came in, I noticed that how yellow the headlights were. And I said to myself, yeah, we'll have to give them a quick tidy up and a recoat of clear. But yeah, massive difference with the headlights. So um but as far as the rest of the job goes it's actually really good so there's not many low spots so the low spots you've got to fill up with like a bit of clear or something like all the stuff that you can see in the bonnet they're all they're all like little raised sections so they're coming up and we can sand them back flat with a bit of um uh, sandpaper like uh 1500 2000 3000 and then 5000 we'll give them a sand back and and that's going to look a million dollars there was one spot over here somewhere that I did actually have to dab it in. Um, but all in all, I'm really impressed with it. So the um, the overspray was pretty excessive last night, as you probably noticed. But my missus, or my wife, she actually did come out at one point last night when I was painting. And she said that she, um, she came out uh, for the reason of actually seeing what the... Um, the fumes were like and if it was too smelly and she said it actually wasn't that bad while I was in here spraying she had a, like a little bit of a walk around in the garden there and she reckons that um, she could barely even smell anything so that's good um, you know as long as it's not going to be too smelly for my neighbors which by the sounds it's not there's no reason I can't do more of these kind of jobs at home um, and it's also not excessively loud the compressor I've got is a silent compressor um, the orbital sanders that I use are quiet and even this fan here like it's not that loud you know um, obviously it's all electric so it's you know relatively quiet motors but um, as far as this setup goes I'm gonna have to probably revisit that because this filter it did end up filling up with clear coat really fast um, I think it did a good job at removing the odor um, as I said, like the missus said that she could barely smell anything, but you could tell that it wasn't really doing much after not long. So what I ended up doing at one point was like lifting this up and you could see straight away all those fumes just started going through there. So I'm gonna have to maybe, I've got an idea, but as I said, I'll, I'll get later, uh, I'll get into all of that later on as far as uh, what I've got planned for this. Um, but let's just have another quick look at the job. And I was quite impressed with how clean, like, actually down the sides were. And for whatever reason, this end is much cleaner than that end. I actually would have expected it to be the other way around. Um, because, like, if you think about it, like, that fan is uh, sucking all the paint out. And this is where I was expecting all the dust to, say, be coming through, like the openings in the garage there. Um, but if you look down here, it's actually pretty clean. Like that's actually a good reflection too. Like nice and uh, glassy type finish. Sorry, I haven't done my hair yet. That's why I wasn't putting myself on the camera this morning. <laughs> um, but yeah, like that, that actually looks quite nice. A um, couple of nibs up here, but we'll sand them out. That should be all good. Have a look at that. That's pretty damn good to me. Um, there was a couple of spots on that roof where my masking tape, when I unmasked it, it actually peeled off the paint on the roof. So I'm gonna have to do a little touch up on that. If it's that bad, we could paint the roof without too much of a, a big deal because we've got a bit of color left over. And yeah, I mean, something like that, like it might look bad, but it's actually, it's just a bit of time, that's all it's gonna take. It's just gonna take a little bit of time to fix. Like, with all the um, de uh, the bits of dust in it, that's literally all it is. It's just gonna take a little bit of time and not even that much time, to be honest. And you have gotta be left with a finish that is dead flat. So, you know, <laughs> that's always a positive, isn't it? Um, as I said, as long as I'm not getting um, silicon spots all through the job, um, having clean air is very important. 
I'm gonna do a review on that compressor, but it did not miss a beat. That compressor ran two bar for five plus minutes and it did not even dip down at all. So really happy with that compressor. It's quiet and it was um, able to keep up with the Pro Light. Thanks again for hanging around to the end, guys. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And there still is a couple more videos coming in this series, so be sure to subscribe if you're not already. Anyway, until next time, get out there and paint some shit coming out. I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching, and if you'd like to support the channel further, you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favorite is those spray suits, so they're a good quality collab branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it there's also hats drink coolers hoodies and t-shirts so be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested